Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim PF, and on today's episode, we're going to be covering something that's pretty much brand new. Now, if you're in the circuit, if you're in the whiskey circuit, if you're interested in whiskey in any way, shape, or form, especially stuff that isn't particularly scotch, then you might already know that this is coming. It's really only available on the Mirror website right now, but uh, it's pretty much going to be coming over here soonish. Don't know any dates or anything like that, but uh, you can get hold of it through Mirror directly for £60. And we'll get into the price a little bit later on. This is an interesting one. And as you guys know, if you're fans of the show, I do like McMira bottlings. Even their kind of bog standard at the start of their core range, like the Mac, for instance, certainly has its place. Uh, I remember saying I think it's probably a little bit expensive for what it is, but it, I've been enjoying the bottle of it. It's been going down quite nicely when I uh, fancy just something a little bit not very complex. Now, McMira have several different ranges across their entire global range. And the first one is the core range. Then they have this, this is the seasonal range. And then finally they have the moments range, which I've covered one of so far, the Scogs Hallon, which uh, is you know in the, the links around and about. This is the second one from the season one I did. It's about almost a year ago I covered the Apple Blom, and this is the Grand Thé, which literally is green tea. Idea behind this is it's been finished in a, a kind of barrel that's been seasoned with green tea, but we'll get into that barrel a little bit. I also know a little bit about the constituents of the rest of the bulk of the material because they've got an excellent fact sheet on their website. It's not quite as in-depth as something like Compass Box, but I appreciate the transparency nonetheless. It's presented at 46.1%, which is an excellent ABV. I do like that. So the cast types. In here, I'm just going to grab my glass so I can swirl it while we're talking. We have some uh, first fill Swedish oak, which is always a nice thing to see with these guys. Their Swedish oak influence is really quite noticeable, I think, across their range. It's uh, a hardier oak. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much influence that has, but I can pick up McMira uh, in a blind tasting most of the time because they've got one of those indicative flavor profiles that's, um, it's not, it's, it's not, it's difficult to pin down the actual flavor profile that you're tasting, but it's easy to say that it's McMira, I think. They've also got some First Fill X Bourbon in there and some new and First Fill Oloroso. Not sure how you get new Oloroso, but I think what they probably mean is new European oak and First Fill Sherry casks, maybe. That's me just reading off of the uh, of the actual sheet and kind of making my own mind up about that. Now that mixture of those three, uh, four technically cask types is then vatted and then kind of aged together in a final cast type, which has been seasoned with Oloroso and a, a blend of four green teas. I'm assuming that they've kind of made tea essentially uh, and then strained that out and then mixed that with the Oloroso rather than chucking in green tea leaves into the barrel. That would probably be a bit of a nightmare to clean out, I imagine. But if they did do that, maybe they did. Not sure. I'm just assuming that it's just kind of like a uh, a kind of syrupy mixture I guess they've made to season it with. Not sure how long they seasoned it for either. I'm not sure about how long they aged it for afterwards in the finishing. But that's how this has come about. The beautiful thing about the seasonal ones is they don't tend to sell out too quickly. Uh, so you can still get hold of these and the ones previously on their website. Most of the ones, there's some that have sold out. But the point is they do sell out eventually. They won't make this exact bottling again. They might do this experiment again somewhere in the future. But it's hard to say. Let's get on to the actual tasting of this and see what kind of influence this has got on the actual liquid itself. Cheers. Now for me, it's got that immediate that kind of McMira note about it. it if you're into your space side whiskies, it'd be very familiar to you. Very bright, very fruity, lots of orchard fruits like apples and pears, that sort of thing. It's light, but it's lively. Let's go on to the palette. Um, for me, it's quite spicy, like a cinnamon spice is going on there. Lots more of that stuff you've got in the nose. There's apples, there's pears, there's fruitiness going to it. I have to say, based on those two alone, uh, and I'll get into the finish in a moment, but the nose and the palate, personally, I don't get much green tea on that. Um, I'm a big fan of green tea off camera. You know, I, I, I appreciate a green tea in the evening, nice and simple. No milk, no sugar, no nothing. Just chuck a, a, a tea bag in there and, and forget about it a few minutes later. Big fan of that. <clears throat> so 
Not really getting much of that on the palate or the nose, but let's have another sip and we'll see about the finish. After a little chew, kind of let that waft away. The finish is really quite spicy, medium, and it's the same flavour profiles all the way through it. They just fade and fade and fade and fade and fade until literally I'm waiting for it about now. So that's a good 20 odd seconds after you've swallowed and you're kind of enjoying the finish. For me, this is where the green tea really rears itself. It's the kind of bitterness that you get after you've drank some green tea. If you can see past the uh, the kind of spiciness and the whiskey notes that you're getting, you'll get this kind of bitterness from the green tea, I think. It's one of those drams that if I gave this to you blind, you would drink it. Uh, you wouldn't be able to tell that it's green tea. I can almost guarantee that unless you're you're some kind of tasting clairvoyant. But I, I imagine, I think, in my personal opinion, that you would be like, hmm, there's something about this that I can't put my finger on. That's what I think you would do. But I suppose there's only one way to really test that, isn't it? And that's to do some blind tasting. For me, it's a complete winner. Really enjoying this. It's typical McMira with a slight twist, just like all of their whiskies are. Angela there, Master Blender, is doing absolutely amazing things. And I, I, I mean, I can only imagine what the, what the board meetings are like. They just sort of sit down and they go, right, what crazy stuff have you got today, Angela? And she's gone, well, I'd quite like to try green tea. And they're sort of going, hmm just do it yeah why not what's the worst that could happen in my opinion no worse has happened but i love the fact that they're giving free reign to do what, what kind of whatever she wants to a certain degree i guess um the, there's amazing stuff coming out of mcmira at the moment and this is just one of them i implore you to check them out if you haven't uh, have had some conversations in the past about the uh, value of these bottles versus kind of scotch for instance is a good example um i think addressing that as a scotch fan you will definitely find enjoyment in McMurrah if you can be uh, convinced to spend the extra money. If you're looking for age statement value, you're not going to find it in McMurrah. They're too young for that. And, but really what they're putting out is excellent cask choices. That's the really main thing. And I must impress that on anybody who's a big fan of age statements. Age statements are great, but the most important thing in whiskey, in my opinion, is cask choice. And if you put young whiskey in excellent casks, you can get a really well-aged whiskey in flavour profile, in not in number, in only a matter of years. But if you use a third fill, fourth fill, whatever tired old cask, then yes, it's going to take 18 years to taste anything nearly like a good whiskey. That's just my opinion. If you agree, I hope you do, that you would go and check these out. I really think you should. I'm a big fan of McMira, and I'm going to keep covering these guys whenever I get bottles of these this type coming through. And I hope you enjoy these reviews too, because... I certainly enjoy trying new things. And I, as... Ugh. Is 